Hi everybody, come on in. How are you doing? This is the strange days. So I'm trying to get caught up with all my orchid projects and I thought today I would attempt the one I don't want to do the most. So I have a very, uh, the reason I put this orchid in this pot was because the long, if I say stem, people think I'm talking about uh, the stems of the flowers, the inflorescences, but I'm not. It has such a long center monopodial stem that um, over years the leaves have died off and it's got longer and, and sadder looking and it's doing the orchid no good. And this orchid has been suffering for quite a while, but I've been waiting, I've been waiting for enough roots to be on the surface. And there's one there, and there's some here, which we'll see a little more, so that I could cut it off. And what will happen is, I'm going to cut the top part off, the bottom part that does have just leaves, it will not grow leaves. It will not grow, grow into this same plant. But what could happen, if I'm lucky, is it may grow some small baby plants off the sides. And if that happens, then they will end up being new plants that will take quite a while to get to the age to flower. But I'm going to see if I can get some. So this is a big operation for me. So um, I have some of my blue algae. It's called Big Blue. I bought it online. And it's seaweed extract. And I've put a little bit in the bowl so that uh, after I cut it, I can just put it in there for a few minutes and give it a soak. And both ends, actually. And I have two small pots because there's not going to be much there and I want them to be uh, feel supported and firm so the bottom will go in one and the top will go in the other one. And I, because this is, um, this is a fairly new uh, bark in here that I put in it before that I, I will use the same bark so it won't be getting a change. It's still going to be in that media. So let's see how it looks <laughs> in there. So I'm just going to pull it up and see what we got. Now one thing about growing in bark is even though this, the bark, it, I don't have to replace bark so often because like I find I'm doing two, three years, and I'm fine. Three years is fine because it's it's never dry. There's uh, never wet and soggy because it drains well. They get lots of air. So anyway, what I want to show you is what we're we've got to deal with here. We have on the top we have one root here. We have another one here. We and you can tell how fast they're growing. By the length, and this is this is a nice one. So um, there's some others starting to happen here. These are old ones. Probably nothing will happen there. This 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 is one of the the old original roots, and um, there's a side shoot there. I really don't think it's doing anything, but because I'm just leaving it on the bottom piece, it's not going to matter. Now the bottom piece, it's always hard to decide. See this is so long and you can see where at other times there's been other flowers, other flowers. And this is a nice root system here. And I don't think I'm going to leave it on the top portion because um, I don't want to leave that much bare stem. Like if I left these nice little green shoots here, uh, I'd only be taking about an inch off. 
and there's still all this. So I think I'm going to leave that on the bottom portion and because uh, nothing really is happening here. I think I'll, it's a very, very tough decision, but I think I'll go under here and then leave this much, this much for the bottom and go with this on the top. And then these little ones here, they may, they may develop into something. So, um, we're going to cut it. <laughs> okay, so I got, I got my dish thing here. And the, the, the way I'm going to cut it is, let me just move this out the way for a minute. See, and there's nothing in it. I put a few of the orchids that were, um, eh, not all my orchids, <laughs> but I put a few here just as a backdrop. And uh, so, okay, now what I have is I don't want a rough cut. I want a nice, smooth, clean cut. And this is a brand new razor blade. We don't want any cuts because we don't want to go to the hospital. That's for sure. <laughs> it's a good place to stay away from if we can help it. Um, so, okay, I'm going to cut... Let's see, where's that one coming out of? Okay, I guess I don't want to cut too much off. I think I'm going to go right here. So, this is sharp, and this is also very tough, but it's just going very slowly. There we go. We went through and we got a nice, clean cut. So, Now we're going to try and get some baby orchids. I'm not cutting any of these off. Um, there's nothing rotten. There's some dead ones here. I, I'll, I should probably cut them off after, but we're not too worried. The thing is, um, I find uh, when some, some roots go either from an old transplant or they're not working anymore, with me, they no longer go mushy because my, I always operate on the dry side. And, you know, I slowly worked into that where, where it was all bark, but I found that um, they, they seem to be very hardy. Once they grow those roots in that bark, they're very, very hardy. And the major thing when you're growing your orchids, I think the most important thing and, and it's very hard to do when you're doing it in your living quarters, no matter what part of your house you are. Now, if you have a grow room, you can keep your humidity at the exact amount. The doors are shut. It's a different size area. But when you're in your home and everything's open, it's very hard. And that's one of the hardest parts is the humidity, is to keep the humidity... Um, Oh, it'd be nice to keep it between, say, 50 and 70 for Phalaenopsis. And if I see mine drop below 50, I definitely go and miss twice a day in the morning and the afternoon if I'm here. I am here now. <laughs> and I, I, I miss the air and, and a little bit of plants, not on the media itself, but the plants and get that humidity around there to help. Um, and then, besides my misting bowls, which are cool misters, besides the misting bowls, of course, you notice I have little old vases and things filled with water and a couple fountains. So I can usually keep at least 50. At least 50. I like to keep that my minimum. Because the other thing is, if you've got orchids, the closer you have them all in one spot, they create their own humidity in amongst themselves. So, uh, you know, I've seen people sometimes, they have a couple in the kitchen, a couple in the dining room, a couple, well, actually, they're, unless your humidity in your whole house is better, then they're better off together where they create their own little environment. And then when I put the misters on, 
then they're even happier. And if it does rain, I just crack that window a little bit and let some of that humidity in. So we've been, uh, we haven't had any rain. I was out spreading some, the compost bin, <laughs> put this long big coat on and these uh, kind of slip on their jacks, really their rubber boots and a, for and a pitchfork. So you could have seen me out there doing that. And I just take the compost bin apart and I spread it all over the garden before he rototills it. Because that's his big job, is rototilling. He does a nice job. And then I go in and I plant things. So hopefully we can start soon. So anyway, here we are. We have the bottom piece. And a close look. We have these green roots. Might be enough to get me some little baby plants there. So we've got this one. And now, this, it was not doing good. It's, as you can see, the leaves were getting smaller. It just, just wasn't doing good, and I don't want to lose it. So, this is what we've got. We've got these, this one here. Possibly, these will turn into something. And then we've got these long ones, and this was going into the ground. And what I'm going to do with the, the longer ones, uh, because they're aerial roots, I'm going to have them not down inside the pot, but I'm going to bury them just below the surface of the media and try and get them to... to uh, I, when they're that close to the surface, they still, I think, think they're aerial roots. So we'll see if we can get them to move. So um, we're going to sit this one in that water for a few minutes. There. There you go. And uh, maybe a little spoon. And I'll just put, put some up around the upper part. Okay. Now, watering day I, I, it's, I kind of flex between Wednesday and Thursday, depending on what we're doing. <laughs> Lately it's been Wednesday. So um, there, and then at the end I'll soak this one and also put it in its pot and we'll see, see what we can do. So now, of these pots, that one's a little wider and this one's a little taller. And I really, I think, let me see, what do you think? Um, <laughs> which one do I put in which one? I think I'll put the top in this one and the bottom in this one. This one's a little bit roomier for to things to keep growing. So, let me just move this out the way. Um, I need some bark. Now, I have not, okay, watering day was um, Wednesday, so I want to show you. This bark is still a little damp. It's, it's quite nice down, oh, the top always feels really, really um, dry. But when I reach down into the center, I'm going to give it its own bark from the center. And I'm going to put another pot that needs to be potted. So, what I'm going to do is take, take the little one. I'm going to, I want it to be snug so that it wants to grow some new roots. Now, I'm going to put it to one edge because of where everything is. Let me see. Maybe not. I might get it more in the center. I don't know how long it will be in here, but I'm hoping I'm doing this now before the major part of the growing season is, is upon us. I want it to spend the whole growing season preferably getting new leaves and new roots. So those aerial roots, the ones that were aerial roots, 
that big long one, I got it right around the top. So, see, then I'm going to use this bark for another pot flower that needs another bark that needs repotting. So, I should be soaking this one a few minutes. And then I'm going to, after I get them both in their pots, I'm going to use the leftover water to pour over each one. So I find when I'm planting, I use my finger and I just kind of wiggle that down inside. I, it's no good putting it in a big pot. It's going to be a lot happier just in this pot. Um, it's going to feel snugger and happier. And that's what I want it to do. So this one will be ready for some. Now it's got the same bark, so that is actually good because it was. It takes about a month with your with your. Um, it takes at least a month for new bark, even though you soaked it for three days. It takes at least a month for that bark to to really start to do its job. So what we mostly want with it is we want. We want air, most important, and we want the water to go down. And slowly that bark starts to absorb a little bit. And it doesn't wick, so you have to make sure you've watered, put it in a bowl of water, or make sure you've watered if you're using a watering can all the way around under the leaves, especially when it's fresh. So there we got, uh, we got this one in. And we're going to hope for the best, keep our eyes on. This was my beautiful purple orchid. It, it was beautiful a <laughs> long time ago in my first videos. You can see it, it was just beautiful and then it just became worse and worse. So this is what I've decided to do. Very hard to find somebody doing this too. On uh, They do say if you cut, cut them like I have this one. They do say to um, use the same bark, put it back in the same bark. I did see that somewhere. So I'm just going to not uh, make it suffer any more than it has to. And I'm going to put this in there. Okay, let's take a little bit of that out. Okay, here we go. Maybe I will cut some of that off. Hold on. Where did I do with my... Oh, there it is. A little crazy way. So, we'll cut this one off. This one was just... Eh, not really doing much. It's not, it's not an orchid that's going to be an orchid ever again. We just hope we're going to get some babies. So... I think I'm going to take this off right here. There we go. There's always someone that can give me tips. By the way, if you go to My Green Pets, if you have another YouTube channel, if you go to My Green Pets, and one of the subscribers told me about, about this in the last video, he is organizing a virtual orchid show because all the orchid shows are cancelled and if you go to his channel he'll tell you how to do it and what everybody's doing because on April 4th everybody's going to upload a picture or a very short small video of maybe their favorite orchid or favorite plant and then when and he'll give you the the I'm not going to say hashtag but he'll give you the, the code that we're supposed to put in the title and then uh Anyway, he'll explain it better than me because I hope I can understand it and do it. So, oh, here's this one's got to come off too. Hmm. So, I, anyway, it's something, and then everybody will get to go to an orchid show, and it'll be a little bit from everybody, and it's such a good idea. So, I thought I should pass that around because I don't know if, you know, I didn't know about it. I don't know how many people don't know about it, but I think that it would be nice. You can just 
go look at so much and it's something about all of us getting together and doing something. Okay, now we're, now we're cooking the gas. There we go. Well, now I do have some cinnamon here and um, I, I didn't bother with this one. In the water, I probably should have. What do you think? Oh dear, I better pull it out and put some cinnamon on the end. Yeah, well, anyway, we'll put some on this one and we'll have to pull it back. Sometimes I sh don't think the way I should. But I don't want to spray it with anything. I just want to put a little bit of cinnamon on it so um, we don't run into any troubles that way. So let's see what happens with this. There is some nodules, some plants might start to grow, and that's what I'm going to be hoping for. So, um, okay, let's get these roots, because I don't want to end up with them back in that pot. We'll throw them in the sink. Now, we have to take this out again, because I, I hate to forget that. So let's take it out. It won't hurt it. Okay, you better put a little cinnamon. And, and I know you don't see me, um, whenever I cut something, yeah, I do like cinnamon. But my experience with, uh, I don't like to go too heavy with anything else. I just, if I can get away without not uh, doing anything, I will. So, let's try again. So I'm in the bottom, put it down. Put a little in. It's in the center. And as soon as I get most of the bark around there, pounce, 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 then I'm going to run that big one right around the top so that it's still close to air, but I'm hoping it might get some little shoots going off of it into the into the bottom. We want as much as we can get. There we go. That's better. Better safe than sorry. Set it right there. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll just pour a little of the I'll pour the a little bit of that over these. I'll do that after because what I want to do is, so we got these two all ready to go and now I have a big pot with nothing in it. And this bark is still in very good shape. So, and there is some charcoal in here. There's some real big pieces of bark. So, I'm going to go down and make a big hole. Put that blade away so I don't. Because okay, let's see what we got for roots. How much bark I'm going to have to take out. Okay, uh, this orchid here, I called it angel wings because it suffered a long time. It went through it went through scale so bad and I did the spray and the alcohol and I found it really dried it up and everything. If you've got any trouble with scale, try and keep it to a minimum. Like always when you're watering, check the leaves and down in the crevices. And if you, sometimes if I see anything down there, I take a pointy knife or something and scratch at it. Because, and I wipe, I look for leaves. You always want to look under the leaves and down in the crevices for those little round dots. So anyway, this one, even though it's in bud, in bloom, I'm going to put it in this other pot. So I'm going to just take this off. It's been in this pot a long time, and Jack said no more orchids, but he said that before. So there is some coming out the corners. 
Let's see. It hasn't been out of this in a long time. See what we got happening in here. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to let some of this fall. Now you can see watering day was Wednesday. This is still damp in here, which is good. I don't have to give it another watering. And things are looking pretty good. So I want you to have a good view of this. So it's got some nice roots coming. It's got new growth, and that's when I want to move it, when it's got, there is nothing mushy or soggy happening. Now here's a dry one. I'm just going to take this off. I'm going to go on my floor and I'll clean it up. I got lots of time. Okay. No, I see no issues. There's, there's no issues. And there's some new little shoots coming out and from some of the older roots. So the color of these roots, they're a little darker, but the bark sometimes stains. The, this red cedar sometimes will stain the roots a bit over time, but okay, we are going to put this in this pot. Now, sorry flower, these flowers have been since the end of December? Awesome! Okay, just depend on a little mole here. I think I have to take a lot more out. Okay. Yeah, there, there, I feel a dampness, so that's all good. And all this has to go back <laughs> that out. Okay. Now I think we're got it because I, I like I don't like to plant mine too high. So there I think that'll be good. And if I see any little roots sticking out the hole I'm gonna poke them back in and say no you're not coming out. It's kind of like pop gold weasel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so this is a, uh, this bark is all good. I, I didn't, I put it in that pot some time ago when I knew I, what I had to do to it. So, oh boy, can you hear that hitting the floor? Oh well. Now, it's got a nice new hole. We'll see if it bothers it, but I don't think it'll bother it. Because it's the same media, there's no media change. It's used to, the roots are used to getting the air because of the circulation between, and they're used to getting the moisture. So, um, and the thing that kills the most, why you end up with soggy roots? If you end up with soggy roots, it's because uh, too much watering for what the media you have in your container. My thoughts on that. There. Now some of these that are trying to be aerial roots, they, they may just go down or they may go up. So I planted it a little deep. Uh, sometimes just take it and hold it and shake some down. I don't want those bottom leaves to be too far in there. There, that's about right where the bottom of the leaf is just a, just barely under the surface of the bark, where it stays quite dry on the surface. So, there we are. And uh, I'll be doing, <laughs> I'll be doing a little cleanup. And 
I hope everybody's doing okay. I think it's much better if we can stay in to stay in. Um, our daughter, Rosemary, she has a job, and I can't really say what it is, but she has a job where she has to work. And a lot of the people she works with, they got sent home with pay. But she's there now doing like double work, and it's, and it's a lot more work. And uh, I mean, our hearts and our prayers to everybody that's working through the time that we're staying home so we can buy groceries, so we have a police force to protect us, so we have the fire people and, and the hospitals and the nurses. And I mean, it breaks my heart. It really does. And pray, pray, pray this will end soon. And somehow we'll all get back to some, some uh, normal type of life. So, um, it's nice. What would we do without YouTube? It's nice to be, be in contact with my YouTube family. And, and, and I always say, you know, in school, I was not that good. And they put me on what was called the general program because in the 60s, it's like uh, you had to go in the university program or you had to go in the general program. And if you, you did these IQ tests, they said, oh, you go in the university program, you go in the general program. Trouble is, the general program, there wasn't a lot of choices what you could do or what you could be. But I, I was always good with my hands, and so I was good at sewing, and I was good at cooking, and, uh, <laughs> and I was good at writing stories, but my grammar, ee, <laughs> it made up for it in the end. But anyway... I took shorthand, I took typing, and I ended up in our big high school that I was in. I, had, I was a third top student in typing, and I got sent to a doctor's office to be a secretary there because the three top people were going to get jobs, and I didn't want to be in a doctor's office. So I ended up being a secretary at Simpson Sears, and that was good. I was happy with that. I had a real nice boss, and things went good. But the good part is, I took typing, I'm fast, and I can answer comments as fast as I can think. So that's why I don't mind answering comments, because I'm just thinking and typing, and it's done. So don't be afraid to leave a comment. And uh, until next time, stay happy and love who you're with. Bye now. <laughs>